everybody, this is Eternal Blade here and welcome back to part two of the stairs tutorial. So today we're going to be covering how to create the newel posts. So those are the posts that actually hold up the handrails as well as you know provide structural stability to the stairs. So we're going to create uh, three different types here. Uh, the one on the right is going to be for the top of the stairs, so sort of where the handrail connects. Uh, this one is going to be for the middle of the stairs, more of a support, and that's why it doesn't have a top. And this is going to be the detailed one for the bottom of the stairs where the handrail curves kind of at the end with the return. So you can see they're uh, pretty detailed models. We're just going to be using some spline modeling to create them. So I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial and um, here we go. So to begin, let's take a look at our reference images. So to make null posts, there's a few different elements. We have uh, the base, which is generally square in our case. We have some sort of decorative um, curves and then a long straight piece and this is for the middle of the stairs there's different newel posts for the middle uh, the top and then the bottom where you have the handrail kind of curving around so we're gonna make all three of these today and then uh, you know have a little knob on top here just showing the detail so let's uh, get started so to begin with we're gonna go ahead and create a plane here in the front as usual just a reference plane so I'll give it uh, one length and width segments and because our picture is let's see here 4032 pixels tall by 3888 pixels wide you can go ahead and make our image the correct size go ahead to your material and just attach any material standard bitmap go ahead and attach the newel post reference image there and click the show shaded material and viewport button drag and drop it in there. <clears throat> Press F3 if you can't see it and G to get rid of the grid. Let's go ahead and object properties, freeze and show frozen in gray. And press Alt W to maximize the viewport. So I guess we can just start um, laying out some of these shapes. So we're going to use a spline here. And we're just going to kind of come up in here and start doing our thing. So let's go here, kind of give it a general curve, and bring it in, and we can always adjust uh, these shapes later, so if we do make some mistakes, it's not going to be life-threatening, I hope. All right, something like that, like that, and we're going to adjust this one here perhaps a little bit at least and just go ahead and bring it all the way up to about there and we can drag it like so all right so now we've got uh, the basic shape let's go ahead and convert this to an editable spline and just go ahead and refine any of these guys as necessary so just come in here and edit them as we see fit. So let's see, what do, what do we have here? This probably needs to be a bezier corner. Alright, that's going to be a pain. Let's just drag that like there. Bring that guy down a little bit. In fact, we can probably just delete that one. I don't think we need it. Make that a Bezier corner and just change it. All right, looks pretty good. This guy can probably delete. Make a Bezier corner here. And then over here, we're going to do the same thing. So <clears throat> Bezier corner, drag that guy in. That looks pretty good. All right, now we go ahead and use the Lathe modifier. And then for the axis, press W and just go ahead and drag it over to get the correct thickness. <clears throat> and segments, we'll do about uh, 30. Should be good, I think. You want it fairly round. All right, that should do the trick. So. We'll leave that as it is and then let's go ahead and make the 
<clears throat> box. So we'll do this. Bring out the box and make sure the width and the height are the same. So 245 and 245. The length can be whatever we want. And then we'll just go over here and center it up. Now one of the things I noticed was we actually need to have <clears throat> a bit of geometry here. So let's um, do about mm, 10, 10, and 10, and then apply an FFD 4x4. Four four. And on the top, you want to select the outside control points here. And then just go ahead and drag them down. This will actually make kind of a, a dip. Because if you see here, it actually has a curve coming in. So we want to emulate that curve if we can. And I think we did a pretty good job of it. There we go. All right, so that's basically one of your posts already done. So let's go ahead and work on, let's see, we can do this one next, I guess. So these are going to have the same dimensions when they're done. So we can just make a little post here and we'll use this same one. So let's go back to our splines here. And we're just going to look at one side more or less. Okay. I'm just going to sort of click where I think I need some. And we're going to adjust it later. So this is sort of a different way of doing it. Okay, that one will be like that. Like that. Kind of come up. Give it a curve, 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 and then straight up. All right. Go ahead and make this an editable spline as well. And let's begin to refine the shape based on what we want. So we can just control A. Well, actually, no, we don't want to do that. Let's just go ahead and make this a Bezier corner and adjust this guy. So something like that. And then bring that out. It looks like I may have uh, messed up a little bit there. We'll give this a Bezier. A busier corner. All right, like that. There we go. So I'm again just trying to follow the curve. Where the heck is the other handle? Oh, there it is. Let's just drag it out. All right, looks pretty good. Following the curve. This guy could probably come out a little bit. Make that a Bezier corner. All right, looks pretty good. That looks good. Comes up here. So it's just basically a matter of you know going in and adjusting your points to where they they sort of match. Kind of weird. All right, and then we've got a another corner here. And one last corner up here. There we go. So just kind of add in, you know, whatever detail you can see. This guy, let's see, what is this? That needs to move something like that. And looks like this is actually needs to. I'm also looking at this side over here just to make sure I'm kind of doing the right thing, and this one seems a bit off, so we're gonna adjust it just a shade. All right, and bring it up. <clears throat> there we 
we go. So go ahead and create your lathe modifier. And just like before, go ahead and move your axis so it's lined up. All right, perfect. And then we can basically come over here, <coughs> press R and scale it to where it's about the same size as the other one. So maybe something like that. There we go, that's pretty good. So <coughs> move that and just drag that into position here. And just try to center it up as best you can. Go into multiple viewports if you think it'll help you. All right, there we go. So that one's done. And finally, we can work on the top post. So it looks pretty similar to the bottom one, but it has subtle differences. So we're just going to go ahead and model it as well. So uh, same exact process, just going in with the spline and uh, creating whatever geometry we can see. We're actually going to work, I guess, from top down. You don't have to go from any specific point. That was odd. All right. So just kind of curve it. Give it whatever curve you think it needs. And you can feel free to be creative with this. I mean, there's a lot of cool little elements you can uh, you know, make in these things. All right, there we go. So again, editable spline. And let's just go ahead and convert these guys to your corners and move the handles about a bit. All right, excellent. And this guy kind of bulges out a little bit, comes in, looks good. This maybe not quite so far. Oops, bezier corner. We'll go ahead and drag that out. Okay. Press J to get rid of the bounding boxes. I don't know why they enabled those a few versions ago to always be on. I'm not a not a huge fan of them. Some people like them, but I don't know. I just never developed an affection for them, so to speak. All right, looks good. Maybe he will kind of do a little thing like that out. All right, that looks good, looks good, looks good, and then we'll probably bezier corner this guy just to straighten it out to where it goes in. All right, so do your lathe modifier one last time, and this time we're going to go on the other side, so like that. Okay, and go ahead and uh, scale that the appropriate size so that's actually pretty much spot on so we don't have to worry about that and let's also um, attach these guys to it so there we go and now these are different sizes so because of that we're going to let's see what are we going to do here I'll just go ahead and grab the FFD and affect the size. So something like that ought to do fine for this one at least. Okay, and then let's go ahead and drag this guy straight up. Okay, and pop that into position. And then we're going to need to adjust the bottom here a bit. So, oops, press one on those and drag it down. And then we're going to need to, let's go ahead and isolate selection. Just select all the outside edges of the FFT 4x4. And go ahead and drag them up. That'll just give us the same sort of. Uh, 
you know, curved shape that we're looking for. And actually, I wonder if we only do the edges. What, that, what will that make? Oh, that's even better. I think that's actually what we wanted the whole time. So there we go. All right, end isolation mode. And we're good to go there, good to go there. Bring it down just a tad. All right, like that. Let's go ahead and <clears throat> create the little uh, top portion here using the same exact technique. So we're just going to, let's see here. Oops, make sure you're in the front viewport, not perspective, or else it'll your line will go all crazy. So make your line, click, click, let's do Click there and then click there. All right, now go ahead and create an editable spline as usual. Press one and let's just go ahead and convert all these guys to Bezier corners. All right, and just begin to adjust them. All right, so you can straighten them up as you want and change them around. All right, there we go. And just bring this guy up. And we'll give this guy a Bezier corner as well and adjust that handle. All right, go ahead and do your lathe. And we're gonna wanna have weld core on this time. Press W and just drag it over. Now, it looks like we're a little bit, uh, let's see. Go to your line here. Well, edit spline, sorry. And just grab this guy and drag it over a bit more. All right, that should almost Close the gap a little bit more. So, all right, that should do it. Hmm, maybe we went too far this time. So you can just show the final product, I guess. All right, lay. Then we'll do an edit poly here and just uh, cap it ourselves. All right, looks good. So all we need to do now is go into the front viewport here. Oops, just drag it into position. You can go ahead, effect of it all, centered object, just to make your life a little bit easier. And align it. Maybe increase the size a little bit here. And there we have it. Just trying to align it with the lines on the actual mesh. All right, so go ahead and unfreeze all. We can delete the background here. And now we've got our three newel posts for our stairs. So we created the balusters last time. And now we've got our newel posts. So uh, we're moving right along. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, please be sure to like and subscribe. And you know, if you want to check out some of the other architectural videos, there's a lot of cool stuff out there. So with that being said, I. Uh, Hope you guys have enjoyed this and I will see you next time. And as always, happy modeling.